Time now for Trash, and it's brought to you every day by the great folks at Mortgage Right. Hey, if you're looking to purchase or refinance a home, act now before those rates go on the rise. With locations nationwide lending directly to home buyers, our friends at Mortgage Right, they remove the speed bumps on the road to home ownership by cutting out the middleman, ensuring a fast, worry free process. Visit mortgageright.com to get started. That's the right way to do a mortgage. NMLS 2239. We start first. Craigslist ad seeking a wedding date for a future bride's mother-in-law offered a whopping $1,000. A future bride's mother-in-law. We were looking for a date. That's what she was okay. looking for. Right. Oh, boy, name, image, and likeness has gone to a crazy place <laughs> it now, really hasn't has. it? Is it spreading that way? Now, the ad titled Wedding Date Wanted for Mother-in-Law was posted on July 11th to the Hudson Valley Craigslist, Times Union reported. I didn't know Craigslist still a big thing. It is a big thing. Uh, it's mainly, mainly for, um, well, actually, this Facebook marketplace has taken over. Uh, if you have a uh, significant other that always on this Facebook marketplace. You know, we know we've got a common friend that actually met his girlfriend on Craigslist. Um, I'd um, like to hear the rest of that It story. was years ago and ended up being his roommate, his live-in girlfriend for a long time. Wow. Met did, her on Craigslist. How did it yeah. work out? Well, they're not together anymore. What is the thing, missed connections? Do you remember that? Uh-uh. I remember there's a missed connection. You said, like, hey, I was in Sam's Club the other day, and I had a conversation with this guy. He had a blue shirt. We had a really good connection. It's in Birmingham. Can anybody help me? Misconnection. If you are this guy, my name is Janet. Please contact me. Those are called misconnections. Okay, like, so I, I met you at the beach in Pensacola. We got really drunk together, but I thought we had a great conversation. I'm getting thrown off, and I'll come back to the story, but I'm walking in Superior Grill last night with Little Man. Just him and I are having dinner. And when I turn the corner of the first bar booth, there's a girl sitting there with a margarita, and she stares up and, like, looks me over, and I could tell she was waiting on a Tinder date. Oh, no. Like, she was waiting on a first date. And I thought I'd be funny and say something to her, but I didn't. But I made sure we sat in the booth behind her because I wanted to hear the conversation. I'm not a big eavesdropper, but I wanted to see what the icebreaker was. Right. So the guy got there about 10 minutes late, and he starts talking about submarines and TikTok. That's my, that's my go-to. Yeah. And just, I mean, nonstop. I don't know if she got a word in. Oh. Mm. You'd have been, you would have been a better date, what you're saying. Can I give you an app I, idea? I don't know about that, but... Here's, yes. here's an app idea based on something like that. Tell me if this app exists or if you think it's a good idea. So I, uh, we went to the beach, and we were at the pool, and there were, I think they were there with their parents, but they were college-age kids, and there was guys and girls. And I noticed, like, kind of across the pool, you could tell that there was some interaction going, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like looking and you know, waving. And I thought, is there an app where I could create a profile and I can make it discoverable at a pool or like that? Oh, it already exists, right? What's Tinder, it called? Tinder works like that. So you, if you you're in find, the same place? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, then there you go. I used to work with a guy who we went to the national championship. Uh-huh. And we got down there, and the first thing we were checking in the lobby, the first thing he did was turn on uh, the <laughs> how many – and he went out with three people a night yeah, while we were down there. No, no, no. Because that's different, have, though. I know what you're talking about. This is like a mile rate. It's like I'm on yeah, the tender like, deck. I want, wherever I am, 25 miles yeah. from my location. I'm at the pool at the Mirage in Las Vegas. Yep. Come like, get me. <laughs> yeah, no. That that would be really yeah. interesting to do something like that. Yeah. I, I know who you're talking about, and uh, that was just the – what people do on Tinder is when they change locations, they'll just change their location. Yeah. and he, But he started dating people that were yeah. in the warehouse district of New Orleans. But if yeah. I turn it on and turn my phone on and I make it uh, I make it discoverable, and then the young lady across the pool could say, oh, there's that guy that's sitting over there. I see his, uh, and yeah. she could, she could boom. Cabana then, B. That's right. Yeah, and if she well, I'm not, swipes left, she swipes left. I'm not saying meet me in room 706. I'm just saying this yeah. is I an just want to have a good conversation. That's, That's right. You never know. Yeah. I just think for somebody to share a glass of wine. Okay, you're a beautiful hijack. woman. It helps. No, okay. Back to the Craigslist yep. and the wedding date wanted for mother-in-law. Um, it, the ad went on to read, quote, she needs constant attention and supervision. She will probably wear white and try to escalate small drama. <laughs> probably wear white. Your job <laughs> is to simply distract and de-escalate. <laughs> Flatter her for two days and make an easy one thousand dollars. That doesn't seem like an easy one thousand. It, yeah, it really does not. Uh, chances are that she's got her eyebrows painted on for this thing. Uh, probably so. Martini in hand. Now the ad included a list of qualifications needed for the job, including the date must be a conversationalist, good dancer, and has his own suit to wear. It added 
The date must also be able to pretend to happen to be a guest interested in sitting slash dancing with mother-in-law and experience with narcissist is a plus. <laughs> <laughs> and the ability to use a taser. <laughs> now, if you saw this and you were scratched for cash, would you, and if, if it was a local wedding, would you do it? Yeah. yeah I mean, how much star. money was on there? $1,000. Yeah. Oh, a thousand. I don't know. Oh, people donate Donate yeah. stuff, Rockstar, for a hundred bucks. No, stuff. I, I, I would do it. I'd want to see what she looks like. But I mean, you still. Well, could, she's like, a mother-in-law. She's probably in her sixties. You never know. So you yeah, ins- never know. <laughs> it's an insult to mother-in-laws out well, there. Whatever. I'm saying her forties. I'm just saying, like, I just don't understand, like, what if you're? This is just. This is a job. Yeah. That's it. This is a you, thousand, you are a job. She, this woman is such a handful. They're having to run an ad for a date. A thousand seems low to me. So who do you think it's on the bride side or the groom side that they are mother in law? They hate. That's obviously one of the sides. Like I oh, hate this, my mother. No, this is the bride side. Here's what's happening. This is the bride side because it's her day. Well, I don't. know. It could be the groom too. Yeah. And they're trying to get way too involved in all the wedding. We need a guy to keep her attention. Yeah. This could be either. Yep. How about this one? A historic house built in 1650 by the great-grandfather of President Abraham Lincoln has been wrecked by a teenage driver who crashed into it, avoiding a squirrel. Sure. I bet. <laughs> I bet. I wasn't texting. I bet. Uh, so I tried to avoid the squirrel, you know, not to swerve out of lane, but I did go out a little bit to make sure I didn't hit it. And then when I came back, the squirrel had been hit, and its body obviously had gone out there to get the body. It had been hit, too. <laughs> Get the body. How indecisive, Davey, how Davey, indecisive is no a squirrel? No squirrel left behind. Go get it. <laughs> go, go get go. it. I'm not going to die. Yeah. Yes, you are. How indecisive is a squirrel? No, they, uh, the, the, that's the, why you go straight. No, that's why you go no, straight. No, no, no. But here's what. It's these, like, like me for dinner plans. <laughs> here's what bugs me about the squirrel is, like, he could be, my left tire could be lined up at him, and all he's got to do is dart left, and he's out. But he goes back the other way. Well, he's on, it's because he's just like, I quit. Oh, I, <laughs> I know. But he goes back under my car, and at that point, it's and, all. And, and you it, know when you hit him, you always look in the rear view, and what you see is the tail that sticks up. It's like, <laughs> it's like they're raising the white flag. Like, <laughs> it's, it's I'm blowing done. blowing in the wind. <laughs> yeah. I'm dead. But it, it's like, it, it's once he goes back under my car, it's not on me anymore. I've done all I can do. Yeah. Because I'm with Rockstar. You don't swerve because you never know which way the squirrel's going. All I can do is stay straight. That's the best way to do it. Stay straight and let the squirrel make no, that's it. Right. Something yeah. I don't like that people do is people that go out of their way to run over the turtle. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. I, that's if it's sad. A little, yeah. I've, I just I've went seen, around the turtle I've the other day. Before. There's a turtle across the street. Somebody like go, goes out of their way to hit the turtle. Now, I'll hit a can. <laughs> that's Have you ever seen the geese shut down 280? They yeah, will the absolutely yeah. shut down but, but too. Okay. Too. I've also seen the feathers fly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can't say anything. I've never hit a, uh, the geese or the turtle, but I almost hit the SEC commissioner one time. Wow. That's true. Um, he reminded you of that earlier today. He does every time he comes on. Every time he comes on. Every time. Now. Now, yep. Okay, so back to this. The Samuel Lincoln House on North Street in the town of Higgum, Massachusetts, was badly damaged when the 19-year-old crashed into the front of the historic home on the morning of July 15th. Now, first responders at the scene found a 2014 Audi Q7 lodged into the home's living room. About half the car entered the home, according to a statement from the police department. Police said they issued the teenager with the citation for failing to stay in marked lanes. Now, the owners of the Samuel Lincoln house were still asleep in their upstairs bedroom when the teenager's vehicle slammed into their home and ended up in their living room. The owner said they will repair the historical house and hire a specialist team to repair a sign that was knocked off in the crash. Four score and 20 miles ago, I was fine. I was was going four tires and seven doors ago. (laughs) What's the most disturbing thing to ever wake you up in the middle of the night? Oh, uh, this is a sad story. I can't can't stand when you beat me to a line. (laughs) I'm sorry, Jim. I was. It's it's the new the new format. I thought maybe I would try. I thought I would keep the. Is that camera rolling, bro? It's rolling. Can I just throw it at it? Yeah, somewhat. Yeah, that's a pretty good throw, actually. Very Letterman esque. I like this. Um, Mine's kind of a sad story. I don't want to say it. Don't do it. Oh. Not in trash. Let me repeat it. Trash Four is happy. tires and seven doors ago. It was my line. Now I'm trying to figure out what happened. What woke you up? Was it a All phone right. call? No. We. Uh, it was a nice night out, and we had decided we were in an apartment. It was right after my wife and I had gotten married. We moved to Birmingham. We are in, uh, in the Homewood area in an apartment. And this is a sad story, I'm telling you, man. This is bringing trash down. I promise you I won't cry. Uh, no, you won't cry. I was like, oh. Um, <sighs> so we, uh, it was a nice night out. So we slept with the door, uh, the window was open and sometime in the middle of the night, both my wife and I awoke to somebody screaming, help me. Oh dear God, help me please. 
screaming at the top of her Jennifer, lungs. Jennifer, we close the window. <laughs> so just turn the air conditioner on. <laughs> so, all, Ryan, that's why we're never getting a dog. So I called, <laughs> I called 911. And uh, I said, hey, look, we're in Wildwood Crossings 2717. I think that was our apartment number. And I can't tell you what apartment, but somebody just yelled, help me, dear God, help me, please. And um, they said, okay, we'll send the authorities. Worked out good. I, can't, I, I have no idea if it worked out. I went back to sleep. And she might have been in the middle of a heated session. Oh, you have no idea, man. I was, <laughs> I'm trying to help you. <laughs> help me by shutting up. <laughs> Woman cannot be pleased. Will you please take her to jail? Uh, I, I just heard homeboy next door call the police. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what would you have done? I two more minutes. Two more minutes. <laughs> what would you have done? I would have called the police. Okay. Yep. Or close the window. <laughs> well, um, we or did, bought a house. We did close the window and went to bed and eventually bought a house. All those things. Uh, next one out of an East China province. Uh, police have detained a man and a woman on suspicion of provoking trouble. Have you been provoking trouble? The two rented the woman's ex-boyfriend's car and ran the red lights for 49 times in revenge. Oh. Now, local police first spotted the Audi, another Audi, after it broke in, and it had broken traffic rules 50 times in two days, including 49 times for running the red lights and one for speeding. After an investigation, they found the car was rented by a man surnamed Chen and the car <laughs> owner, Quan. Now, Chen admitted that he was only renting it for, from an acquaintance, Zhu, who yeah. was the one driving the car. They, but Chinese names are tough, man. They really are. Well, those are actually kind of brief. Yeah, well, and, the but those are is. short. How did they spell Zhu? Oh, it might have been Chu. It's a Z-H-U. What is that? Or who? I think that's Chu. I don't know. Ask LeBron. As police reached <laughs> Zhu, <laughs> he confessed thing. that the reason for such irrational behavior was that he had been pursuing a woman surnamed Lou for a long time, and Lou agreed to go out with him only if he sought <laughs> revenge for her in this way. Did you put this story there just to hear it Jesus. The it turned out that Lou and the car owner, Quan had been dating before, but Quan <laughs> ditched her for another woman, <laughs> which irritated Lou. What was, that is that is ridiculous. It's what, impossible to so read. It. It. What, so was, get what was puzzle? Close. Yeah. What was Chu's Boo's name? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Four score and seven tires ago. <laughs> That's trash brought to you by our friends at Mortgage Right. Trash is going to be so much fun when we get in studio. Yeah. It is brought to you by our friends at Mortgage Right. If you're looking to refinance or purchase, act now before those rates go on the rise. With locations nationwide, Mortgage Right makes it so easy. Visit mortgageright.com to get started. NMLS 2239. Listen, I just realized that. If you yawn during a segment, people see us now. There are a lot of or things. Or if you that, pick your nose. Yes, or, there are a lot of things that are going to have to be adjusted. <laughs> yes. Uh, pant, the Pantless Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> that is dead now, right? That's going to be addressed. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say we just make it kilts. <laughs> uh.